how do I use a motor controller in FRC? A motor controller is a device that we use in FRC uh, to surprise, surprise, control motors. Uh, it takes an input power from the battery and then based on some sort of control signal, it outputs a voltage to the motor, which causes it to spin uh, anywhere from off to fully on in either direction, which is important. Motor controllers are super useful for doing a variety of things. Uh, anything from moving an arm on your robot to spinning wheels for like an intake or a shooter. Uh, really the sky's the limit for what you can use motors for and therefore that you need a motor controller. The reason we want motor controllers is because we want control. Uh, we can just hook up a motor simply straight to the 12 volts of the robot system. We see the motor turns on, but it only turns on in one direction and fully on, 100% power. So if we want a little more control, that's when we need the motor controller. We have our motor controller here. This is the Animark Coors 40 brushed motor controller. So we have our Animark Thrifty throttle here, which outputs a PWM signal, which tells the motor controller how we want the motor to spin. So you can see we can go 100% in this direction. We can go some certain percentage under 100 in that direction, or we can go the opposite direction. In this case, the Thrifty Throttle is replacing what your RoboRio will be doing, your FRC control system. So this PWM wire here has two wires. The black one is ground, it's a reference, and then the white one is the signal wire. That is what the RoboRio is varying. It sends a pulse, and then depending on what you tell the RoboRio to do in code, it varies that pulse, the pulse width, which then through a lot of software magic, the motor controller is able to interpret as a number, that number is the output power and voltage. And then again, through software magic, outputs the correct signal to the motor. In the FRC market, uh, we have two different types of motors. So we have two different types of motor controllers. Uh, we have brushed, which we have set up here, which is our two wires. Uh, whereas brushless gets a little more complicated with three wires and you have a separate motor controller. Uh, some brushless motor controllers can act as a brushed motor controller, but a brushed mo motor controller is just for brushed. Another difference between some different types of motor controllers is how they're controlled, the control signal. Um, for the Coors 40 and for what the Thrifty Throttle outputs, it outputs PWM. Uh, your RoboRio has a variety of PWM ports. Um, you can plug your motor controllers in there and control the motors that way, but a lot of motor controllers uh, are CAN enabled, uh, which basically means instead of one pair of wires that goes to your motor controller, it's on a CAN bus, which is just a chain of, of the green and yellow wires. And that's just another way of controlling them. And it, it differs a little bit of how you integrate it into software, but the result is the same of you have a motor that spins. Speaking of programming, we are going to kind of show you the basics of the basics of how do we declare a speed controller object and how do we just write some simple code to spin a motor. Here we have our programming environment, which in this instance is the WPI lib extension for VS Code. This was just a very simple C++ project that I opened up. Um, again, this is the basics, just get it out there and get a motor spinning. So here at the top, it's pretty simple. I declare a generic HID joystick, which is super simple. And then I declare a PWM object. Whenever you declare these two objects, this joystick and this PWM object, you are creating in code where it is. And when you create it, you see these little zeros in here, uh, you're declaring that this object is PWM zero, which is associated with the PWM zero port on the RoboRio. So when you do that, you're telling the RoboRio, hey, anything I do with this object uh, is going to go out of the PWM zero port on the RoboRio. I have scrolled down to the robot periodic function. Again, I'm just going to walk through the code. This code here, we have mstick, which is the joystick that we declared earlier. We get the raw access of one, which is in this generic USB controller I'm using is the left stick forward and backwards. We grab that value, we output it so that we know it's doing something. Uh, we do some scaling so that the number outputted from the joystick isn't negative a thousand to a thousand. We just want negative one to one. We turn that into a pulse width with again some math here that you're able to see. 
And with all of that processing done, we go mpwm.setPulseTime, pulse width. And that tells the RoboRio to output that PWM signal out to your motor controller, thus spinning the motor. Now the example we just showed in code here is very generic. Any, any speed controller that takes a PWM signal can be used for this, but uh, a lot of motor controllers use CAN, and that's not just as simple as send out a message. Um, and for that, the vendors of whatever motor controller uh, you've purchased and are using on your robot have their own library. Bringing in those libraries, it's pretty much the same process. Lots of community resources and WPI lib guides of how to do that. So whether you're using PWM or CAN, uh, at the end of the day, you're setting a motor speed. You're telling the motor controller, hey, I want the motor to go this fast, and it's, it's doing that. How that kind of varies is what your application is. For a drivetrain, you might pull in a joystick value and tell the motor controller to vary the, the motor based on that. If you're getting a little more automated with, say, putting your input out, you might just push a button and then it runs a little subroutine that tell the motor to spin for a certain amount of time and at a certain speed. Really, it just depends on what subsystem the motor is being used for, and that really determines what you do with it in code. In my experience, one of the mistakes that comes up the most often and most of the time is the least destructive is getting your directions wrong. Because we have green and white here, it doesn't really mean much, but for a DC motor, at least a brush DC motor, what direction it spins is determined by whether it's a positive or negative voltage according to the motor. Before you go doing anything dangerous, you wanna hook up your motors and make sure your direction and code is right. It's pretty easy to fix because you just put a negative in front of it if it's going the direction you don't expect. That's a very common thing when you're just starting to assemble your robot. Sometimes the directions aren't what you expect and plan for that because it will happen. A lot of motors are pretty robust and for you to, to blow them up, typically you have to um, not realize something is going wrong for a little bit of time. Well, where damage can come in is when a motor, say again, you have it on an intake system and you expect the motor to go one way to put the intake out, but instead the intake is in and it's trying to go further in. That can cause some destruction. Always remember to reference your resources. There are a huge amount of community guides out there. Uh, vendors provide their own guides. Um, use your community. The internet is a great thing. So that is a brief introduction on how motor controllers work. They're uh, a great little device that are used all throughout FRC. Your robot needs them if they want to power robots. They take in a signal and convert that um, to motor going. And that is how you use a motor controller in FRC.